We've seen major degradation in the ecology of many of our estuarine ecosystems. A big source of the problem has been sediment coming off the land. In other parts of New Zealand, it's nutrients coming off intensified dairy farming land. We are seeing global changes happening now in terms of the way that our government and our big industry will be expected to report on their impacts on biodiversity. So we need to be gearing ourselves up to be able to offer advice on that process so that those processes are not greenwashing, but leading to meaningful sustainability. Seaweed's having a little bit of a sunrise. There's people excited all around the world with the potential that seaweed can do. In Aotearoa alone, there's more than a thousand species of seaweeds, and each one of those have their own potentials. You can eat it, you can create plastics, you can make protein. The opportunities are pretty huge in terms of what we can do with seaweeds. In order for a business like Agrisea and others in the seaweed sector to grow, we do need supply of seaweed because we cannot be wild harvesting our rainforests of the ocean. No seaweed, no fisheries. It's a simple fact. Seaweed comes from all around the North Island in New Zealand. We have teams of collectors under our MPI permits and the GPS locators collecting seaweed after storms, always by hand and always making sure that there's seaweed left on the beach for the coastal ecosystem. Rediki Te Rediki Tai is a project, we call it Sea, Soil and Society, but it talks to the flows from mountains to sea and also the seas back up into the mountains. Uh, it's a full ecosystem approach, including humans as part of our ecosystem. Seaweed's been renowned for centuries as a vital component to plant health, soil health. We don't actually need to buy nitrogen from a bag. There's 78,000 kilos of nitrogen above every hectare. What we are lacking is the ability to utilise that through having diversity of plants, transitioning to, to biostimulants, having year-round green. You know, with all these systems in place, there is not the need to purchase nitrogen. We can get it for free. So seaweeds can be created into biostimulants and they're quite a really different class of farm inputs than our fertilisers. Our fertilisers' job is to add nutrients, whereas biostimulants stimulate processes in the soil and in the plant. So at Agrisi, we try and empower our farmers to be good kaitiaki of their land and start that kind of nutrient management and care for the downstream effects in each paddock. So they're able to use less inputs and farm in a way that's a bit of a lighter touch than what we're currently doing. We're not only stabilising nutrient, we're stabilising moisture, we're stabilising soil, which is really important for our environment, for our oceans, and we're also stabilising carbon. There is appetite for change. People want things to get better. Motivation for improvement of local environments is gaining a groundswell and ecosystem-based management is viewed as a way of moving that. Seeing the importance of place and that people are embedded in the ecosystem and not being outside it. And that really resonates with how we need to move forward to solve some of these really pressing issues. I do have a lot of hope because I know that there are a lot of really hardworking people in our country who are committed to improving outcomes for the ocean. Um, I know that Iwi and Hapu that I work with are driving that, they're willing to, to push for innovative strategy. 
We've got to not be afraid to give things a go, to tweak and fine tune some of the work we're doing, whether it's both on land or on a farm or out in the moana. We've got these amazing biomedial ponds using seaweed to help try and clean up some of the nitrogen, phosphorus and heavy metals that we know are coming down. The water's pumped out of the mouth of the Waiho River. It comes into our system through the tanks uh, where the seaweed's able to absorb nutrients. The seaweed species that we use, it's suitable because it's able to grow free-floating as opposed to most seaweeds that require a hold fast on a rock. It's a continuous flow system, so it's constantly flowing back out to the sea there. We saw massive growth, more than we expected. It's doubling to quadrupling its weight in just one week. And some of the data we've had so far is upwards of 90% reductions in nitrogen and over 70% in phosphorus. We really weren't sure how much cleanup we were going to be able to do, and it just absolutely blew our minds as far as actual removal of the heavy metals from our waterways. So for us, the next step is how do we scale this up? In order for us to utilise the incredible benefits that seaweed can provide us, we need to be able to farm it. So for us, working with Greenwave has been really important to understand how we can create supply chains in a fair and equitable manner. Greenwave have gifted us a lot of their IP about how to build a seaweed farm, how to build hatcheries, and ultimately how to stimulate a seaweed sector so that it can be both productive and impactful. Inherent in that is teaching farmers how to farm seaweed and also making sure that what we're doing has as little footprint as possible on our environment and ultimately that the products that are being produced are of the highest sustainability credentials possible. So Agracy is purchasing the pilot seaweed that we're farming and is testing it for its efficacy. Māori are developing a significant and large presence within our marine estate and within the marine economy. And with that, bringing a different framework, a different set of values into the way in which marine estates managed, looked after, cared for intergenerationally. Realistically, my hope is that my generation and probably the one immediately after me can cease the destruction and leave something behind for the younger generations to build back up. My hope for the moana is Māori ora, and that looks like many different things, of course. So it looks like, you know, a thriving diversity of species and clean water and healthy tides, but on the other end, it's also mahinga kai and people using the resource sustainably and those customary practices thriving. Sometimes it does worry me that we're over-hyping the potential of seaweed. You know, it's the Amazon of the sea, both an opportunity, but it's life-giving properties for the planet, really. So it's a bit of a cautionary tale that, you know, we need to think a bit differently. We need to learn some lessons from our landscapes and not apply them in the ocean. The best thing that could happen is that humans, we just get over ourselves, create space for other knowledge systems other world views because what we're doing today is not working. So if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. I think that what we need in Aotearoa New Zealand is a conversation that brings together the NGOs and the activists and the community group leaders who want to see better outcomes as well and try and reach agreement about the values and the vision that we want for the ocean. Coming from a perspective of Māori, we all, whether it be Māori, everyone in this country, has to come to practice kaitiakitanga. We have to look after that sea.